had a varsity basketball game and probably had about 350 of our students in the gym along with uh, probably about 200 people from the public and uh, we had three boys at the end of the game. They were able to evade us and uh, we lost them. You were not in that desk. You need to be in that desk, please. The escape has severe consequences for the robotics team. Look, fellas, we all know what happened last night, right? Did you guys have a chance to talk about what's going to happen? Minimum one week sanction right now. Okay. And this episode has raised fears among the correctional staff. What if the same thing happens when the robotics team leaves the facility to compete with their robot next month? So the point is that you're going to have to Four days later, the escapees are caught. But because of the disruption, the robotics team has fallen several days behind schedule. They still have not begun to build their robot. The Miss Daisy team doesn't have these kinds of problems. They're able to design their robot on a computer before they even start building. Basically what CAD is, it's uh, computer-aided drafting and what we do is we get dimensions from the robot that the mechanical team builds and we put it in on the computer. Dan, he's very technical, he's a guy with a plan um, and, and that's really been playing out and he's been proving himself with that with, with the CAD work that they've been doing. So far this is what they have and we can add some more on it just to make it better. You know what? This piece here is the fact. The things that are looming that I worry about is this whole sort of nebulous concept of what our grabber is going to be. I think all we need is like a gentle tilt back just to bring it off. Yeah. And I think that's something we really, really have to watch out for is that we don't build this perfect machine from the neck down and then it can't finish off the play. So. There's a rule that there's an 80 inch cylinder and the robot always has to be inside of that 80 inch cylinder as it's lifting. So that could cause us some problems. Bring it down to like Logan's eye level. Straight towards me. That's yeah, 98. We're not fitting in the cylinder doing this. It's a serious problem. I mean, it's very restrictive. It, it really limits what you can do in the range of motion. Can you make an 80 inch cylinder that goes about, say, eight feet high, right? Okay. Transparent and put the robot in. Yeah, as soon as you can get to that, that would be good. All right? You're all good, Greg? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks. Our claw or whatever is going to start folded up and then will come out afterwards. Logan is one of our design leaders. What he really does is works from his heart, but he really comes up with creative design solutions. That's terrible. Envelope a little more. Have kind of the main mask. Yeah. Go back and then. We're ahead of schedule right now. All right, thanks, guys. After three weeks of building, the Ratchet Rockers are ready to test drive the base of their robot for the first time. All right. Oh. First test it's with the on. new code. Let's see if it works, guys. Shut up, Mike. Shut up, Mike. Oh, stop. Stop. A robot's a killer. <laughs> so good times. Uh, this, uh, this is a robot. Woo! <laughs> it uh, it it works. Today was the first day. Yeah. yeah. We had it driving. Um. Around. Our goal by the end of today or tomorrow is to get it to work well. Um. Drive forward. Right, drive forward. That's always a plus. Um, but our system that involves the arm is going to be something completely new. I can almost guarantee we'll have to redo it or build two of them. 
Um, so we want to get started on that today. Uh, we should have that done by Saturday night. We gotta put this motor on. Okay, you gotta put the gear. Okay, this is the. So you want like a like an outer check? With two weeks to go, the Robo Doves from Baltimore have done what the other teams could not. They have finished their robot early. Today will be their first test run. It's a huge accomplishment, and a moment that neither the team nor Ron Karpinski will ever forget, no matter if they win or lose the actual competition. Say one left, one left, one and that's what we have. That's this year's robot. Twelve days out of ship day. Want wheels on it? Nice. They want wheels on it. Another team brought in a robot yesterday and they were already all done, had everything all done, you know, and we're just like, had a chassis, a bunch of aluminum welded together, basically. That ball weighs almost eight pounds, and there's gonna be four of those on the track, at potentially at any way. If you have something that's not very robust or strong, it's gonna get broken. There we go. Get in. The Rambotics have designed a robot with a defensive strategy. They do not plan to lift or throw the balls. We have like this little pneumat pneumatic system that while we're over the rack with the balls on top, this shoots up and knocks the ball off. The team is trying its best to complete the robot. Yep, this is our chassis we're working on. We're building uh, our bumpers right now, trying to get it running by the end of today. So that's our goal. Yet their best does not seem to be good enough. In the face of all these obstacles, Adam and several members of the team seem to lose their motivation. Well, he just wanted us to not be standing there not doing anything, what he really wanted. The attitude in this room stinks. The culture in this room stinks. We do not tolerate negative peer associations or negative peer attitudes. The tough love approach seems to work. Take the robot with you. The robot finally starts to come together just in the nick of time. Okay, I want you to turn on the receiver first. Is the green light on? Okay, there it is. Gentlemen, the robot is alive. Alive. So does it turn on a dime? Yes, sir. Yes, it does. So why do we need such a maneuverable robot? There's going to be a lot of robots on the field that we're going to have to drive around, drive through, and all that. This kind of robot is a? Herder. Herder. Now, with the right driver, this robot can go and anyway, take away wow. balls from the opponents. Make sense? I like it. I know. Things have kept falling apart that aren't supposed to fall apart. We keep thinking things are going to work and then they don't work. And then things that have been working keep breaking. Natalie gets a fire under people and gets them moving. She also is a very strong person with mechanical design, mechanical build. That's not going to work. Hey, bolts right down the back. We were running out of time, so we just stopped and we decided to go with air cylinders. So we're going to have three positions of air cylinders. So you'll have an extend, slightly extended position down, fully contracted in the horizontal, and then fully extended in the upper. But the problem is, you know, we're almost near the end, and we had to put an entire pneumatic system onto the, the robot, which not only is time, but you know, it's electrical work, it's air work, but it also adds weight. The bottom one's just binding up. So. This is really going to be the most uh, difficult uh, part of the robot right now that we're doing. The pressure is getting to everybody. The next morning, the team tries again. 
and they finally catch the break they've been waiting for. We finally got the pneumatics working, which is a good thing. And now we're adding a weight to it. See if the motor can handle that. And see if the pistons have enough force to actually extend the arm when there's a 10-pound ball attached to it. The arm can lift up a 10 pound weight, so we're in great shape actually. Grabbers, you know, design, it's actually formed to the ball. They have the curvature of the ball, and we'll use this grabber material in here. With the pneumatics in place, it seems that all systems are go for Miss Daisy. All right, we have two days to finish a robot. Uh, we have two weeks worth of stuff to do. I mean, we're not going to do well at this competition. It, I, we're not. I, you know, and I'm one of those positive people that thinks we're going to, I always think we're going to do well. We're not. Caitlin, she's a pretty live wire. Caitlin, I got a question for you. Why now are you getting into actually wanting to work on the robot? I found it really interesting. It was just really cool. And I don't know, I just... I felt like I was doing more for the team, like... The Winsfield team rallies and focuses on solving the remaining technical problems. Are we ready? I don't know. As far as competing goes, yeah, we can be there and we can compete. We have something that can drive around and our arm can knock a ball off the rack. But picking the ball up, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we have a big day coming up. Um, big three days. Big, three days uh, big weekend. Don't screw it up, people. So don't screw it up for us. In other words, have a lot of fun. Back in Pennsylvania, the arm finally works on Miss Daisy's robot. But with one day to go, yet another problem creeps in. Well, unfortunately, our robot's overweight. Switching to the pneumatic system, got our arm and grabber to work, but this added more weight than we expected. Now we're way over the maximum 120 pounds, and we're running out of time. And then we probably have another half a pound on just nuts and bolts that overextend. That's before you hog that out. And before you hog this out. Pound and a half. Pound and a half for each, yeah. man. I mean, losing five pounds without affecting the stability of the robot, this is a real problem for us to fix this in only one day. We've still got at least 24 hours to work with this. But good old iron exercise isn't going to get it done by tonight. Yeah, it's okay. Do you think each shaft is a pound? You gotta make sure we're under 120. It is that one. Pretty balanced. 119. Get out of town. 119. Yeah, we're good now. 